Apex Igbo Social Cultural Organization, Ohanez Indibo, has alleged that there is a grand plot to keep Senator Ike Kweremadu away from Nigeria owing to the 2023 general elections. It therefore asks the Economic Community of West African State ECOWAS to intervene and ensure the immediate release of the lawmaker. Now, while his wife, Beatrice, was being granted bail, the former Deputy Senate President is currently being held in the United Kingdom, where he is facing trial for alleged organ harvesting. According to the National President of the Johannes Indigo Youth Council Worldwide, Mazi Oku Nabuike, it was unjustifiable that the United Kingdom authorities had no regard for Ekwemadu's diplomatic passport. Well, joining us to discuss this is Dr. Law Merfo. He's a forensic and social psychologist. He's also a fellow at the Abuja School of Social and Political Thought. Thank you so much, Mr. Merfo Law, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for hosting me. Great. Let's uh, examine this situation. One would have thought that um, after the young man um, was, um, well, after the United Kingdom government realized that this young man was not a minor, um, that um, uh, the, the former Senate president would have gotten bail, although his wife did um, get bail. Um, many would also have thought that his diplomatic passport would have carried some weight. But help my viewers understand exactly why the situation is, is as it is. Yes. Ekwaramadu's um, case is very pathetic, very unfortunate, and it is lingering and um, taking a busy turn because uh, the Nigerian nation has not applied, uh, you know, the false or even shown basic interest. In fact, there is evidence, believable evidence, that Nigerian government agency, particularly the EFCC, is communicating with the court and they're trying to incriminate uh, incriminate the quarter mother, and it's very unfortunate. You know, so you can see that a um, quarter mother is essentially on his own because the country he serves, you know, is not um, even uh, coming to his aid. And even uh, rather than keep him uh, quiet and neutral, the, 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 the EFCC is um, writing and um, saying that they, they, they are prosecuting or about to prosecute a criminal matter. So you can understand. You know, so that summarizes it. That is the foundation of his travail. Um, now, Ohanese is alleging that there is a grand plot of sorts to keep him away from. Uh, Nigeria, uh, on also one way or the other, they're also alleging that this might be a plot uh, to not allow him run for the governorship elections next year. What would you like to say about that? I, I think uh, there will be a reason for uh, an agency like EFCC to be writing, you know, incriminating Ecuador model. It makes the whole thing political. It means that, um, you know, the, the, the Nigerian um, executive arm is interested in the case, and they are not interested in the case in a way or manner as to uh, ensure justice or, you know, uh, help a criminal model as a one number five um, citizen of Nigeria. So their communication is to the effect that that the that the Ekorobada has a character uh, evidential issues with the Nigerian state. That is what EFCC has said in writing that they are prosecuting or about to prosecute Ekorobada. That's it. So if you, if if a, if a, if another country gets that kind of funding from a country. You know, of um, very important uh, person they are trying to prosecute. You can see that the country has sort of washed, you know, 
it hand off uh, the case or even trying to aid conviction of Ekwerema in foreign land is very, very unfortunate. You know, and um, if something a uh, TV plus you pick up and find out, is it true that EFCC has written such a letter? If they have written such a letter saying that they are prosecuting or about to prosecute a model. Is that supposed to help a model or is it supposed to work on his case? So that's, that's the way I look at it. And the, 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 um, the position of the organization use a body saying that uh, Equimad is being taken away from the scene because of the 2023, it's not far fetched. You can see that uh, everything going on is uh, is political. You know, certain persecutions going on in the last one year are all political persecutions. Look at the case of somebody like Rogers or Carlos. Look at the case of somebody like Rogers or Corocha. So that of Equilimado cannot be, you know, divorced from such a you know, the interest. So, Dr. Mefo, you you're know, telling me, you know, you're insinuating that these, these southeastern governors and members of the National Assembly have been targeted politically? This is what you're pointing to? Again, I'd like to ask, yours, if, if this were even be were, were to be anything to go by, I'm wondering, for a person of, the, of a position... Uh, like that of the former deputy Senate president, couldn't things have been done better, especially in terms of vetting before you undertake such a journey to a country of that nature? Um, and then now tying it to being a political witch hunt of sorts. I'm trying to understand that. Well, you see, Ebramado has a daughter that needs a kidney transplant. Okay? And he found somebody in Nigeria. And um, when they got there, so that detailed analysis uh, of the, the donor showed that it wasn't stable, or the donor got wise and remixed that he want to complete the process. And the Kuromado, of course, naturally would want the young man to return to Nigeria, and the young, the young man had to tell some story to stay back in UK. It's just simple. That's, that's what has happened. Yeah, and, uh, and you can see that um, when you bring in the angle of um, opposition, EDP has never been a wonderful opposition. You and I know this. But again, the, EDP circumst is not an but again, again, the circumstances you know, surrounding this case... Opposition. I'm sorry to talk over you. The circumstances surrounding this case makes it almost impossible to fully say that this is political. If due diligence was done before leaving the shores of this country, um, and of course, getting to that country, um, it, no matter what story that young man told, if they had covered all grounds, this would have been a no case. So there would have not been room for political witch hunting or whoever was plotting against, in your words, the former no, no, but, president. But then, let, let, me tell, let me draw your attention to something. Okay. A Kurumandu wrote the visa office of UK in Nigeria, explaining that the young man has offered to donate to the daughter. In writing, the visa office was in possession of full disclosure. The interest of a Kurumandu, the purpose of the travel, and the UK visa office issued a medical visa. That's it. So the young man didn't travel for education or tourism. He traveled on 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 a, on, on, on medical visa. So, and it's clear the purpose of his travel was known. So all grants were covered. The problem was that the young man got to that place and got smart and then uh, didn't want to complete the process and didn't want to return to Nigeria. He started pursuing 
asylum in UK and came up with this uh, terrible story against Ekwara Maru. So that's it. Remember that the, the young man started by saying that he was underage. He said he was 15. That has been debunked. He is 21 and will be 22 in a month or two. So he's a full fledged adult. And he traveled as an individual. It wasn't a group differ. Don't forget, if he was a minor in Nigeria, he, he couldn't have uh, been issued an individual visa. Mm. He must travel with somebody. That's the procedure. But he traveled as an individual, as a person, as an adult. So, you can see. I don't know what else a grandmother could have done. He wrote a letter saying that, look, this person wants to donate, you know, to my daughter. That is full disclosure. Okay. If it was irregular and illegal, it should have been stopped in the visa office here in Nigeria. Mm. If a UK embassy in Nigeria, a criminal agency, is he not in a position to vet and issue visa for, you know, only to those who are qualified? The UK embassy in Nigeria is an extension of Britain. It's British government. And they issued the visa, and they issued a medical visa. Okay. So, where did the equivalent go wrong in all this? Let's talk I about... I don't see how anybody can blame equivalent He's only trying to find help for the daughter. Okay. The daughter needs help, and somebody offered to help. Okay. Any, Let... any, any, any father will you know, do what the Koromado would have done. Okay, l l let's talk about diplomacy here, because um, Ohanes Indigo is making reference to it and talking about the fact that he does hold a diplomatic passport and that it should carry some weight. Um, does diplomacy actually work in cases like this, being that it seems to be a criminal case, a case where the government of the United Kingdom strongly frowns upon? Um, Let's also not forget that mem some members of the National Assembly, a delegation was sent to the United Kingdom. Um, um, what difference could he have made? I mean, if he did make a difference, how come we've not seen it? Well, you see, I don't think diplomatic uh, passport, uh, you know, governs uh, criminal uh, allegations. I don't think so. But I also think that um, it, it should uh, give uh, a Coromado some um, recognition. You know, for example, they know that he is an official of a friendly government, Commonwealth. A Coromando cannot run away. A Coromando should be granted bail and ought to have been granted bail. For me, a Coromando shouldn't even have been prosecuted in the first place. When they found out that the young man was lying, they should have let Ekwerumado go. That is why I believe that they are fishing to find a way to rope Ekwerumado in for some political ends. I mean, again, we make, it, we, make it, we make it sound like the United Kingdom is an extension of a political party in Nigeria, and that beats me. It's the United Kingdom. No, they have laws saying, that govern the country. And if they decide to pick up... And I'm not in any way holding brief for them, but I'm just saying it's natural. If something happens in my country, I should be able to follow it to the latter and not be called as called out as being political or as an extension of a political party or the opposition of whatever party now, that person involved is in. See, the, the offense for Peter Guadalmada is being charged is bailable. And you have held him for three months, and you fix the hearing of his matter for end of end of, uh, of October. That's another three months. You know, it means that even the trial of his case has not commenced at all. It will start next three months. That what that means is that even the matter of bail you know, a, a appeal and all that may not be had until after October. 
So if the, if the, if the offense is bailable, why have they denied it for a mother bail? I guess this is a question. question. I think yeah. this is a question that everybody is seeking an answer to. But in closing, quickly, uh, the ECOWAS is also being impressed upon by Ohanese youth uh, wing to um, deal with the issue. And I'm wondering to myself, in what way do you think that the ECOWAS would be able to prevail upon the um, United Kingdom government, being that this is a government and a sovereign state in, its, uh, in itself? Um, you know, what, what powers do they the problem that Mother has is the letter written by EFCC, as far as I am concerned. Because the letter has to do with character, character attestation. And the FCC is saying that they are prosecuting Ecuador murder or about to prosecute him. So the court now is entertaining some fears that if you let this man go, will they be able to get him again? Because his country is saying that he, is a, you know, that, that, he, that he has a problem, you know, that borders on uh, credibility, integrity, and character. So the question is, why is the ENCC writing this kind of letter? Well, you I know, why I'm worried is this. The case Equimadu is facing in the UK is not an economic and a financial crime case. So where does EFCC come in here? Big questions if that country, need answers. If the UK court needs, needs a character attestation for Nigeria, it should be coming from Nigeria police. Mm. It should be coming from Nigeria Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Okay. Why EFCC? Well, this is a question that so we're hoping, we're it's hoping it's to get. Politics. Yeah, these are questions that we're hoping to get answers from, uh, but, but answers to, I beg your pardon. But uh, we'll keep our eyes on this story and hopefully see how it develops. Uh, Law Mefor, Dr. Law Mefor is a forensic and social psychologist. He's also a fellow of the Abuja School of Social and Political Thought. Thank you so much, uh, you. Doctor, for joining us tonight. Thank you for hosting me. All right. Well, that's it. All right, and that's it on the show tonight. It's been Plus Politics. Don't forget, you can watch a replay of the program if you missed it on our YouTube channel. It's Plus TV Africa. You can also go on our website. It's Plus TV Africa. Uh, I, I'd like for you to also subscribe and like all of our pages, which is Plus TV Africa Lifestyle and Plus TV Africa on YouTube. I'm Mary Anakon. I'll see you tomorrow as we continue to talk for development. Have a good evening.